Hello BookTube and welcome to part 13 of Science Fiction and Fantasy, the continuation of my 2020 library tour. First up we have um, The Curse of Shalion by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is the first volume in a, a trilogy, or might be a tetralogy, um, that I picked up. Um, so I checked out the book from my local library and kind of sort of didn't quite get on with it, but I wanted to give it another go and bought it in this very, very beat up Mass Market Paperback Edition from Baltimore. Um, next few books argue that this probably could be called the Tenneth Lee part of my library tour, because uh, there's a lot of technically coming up. First step, um, the, secret burst, um, the Secret Books of Paradise. I technically picked this up from the Friends of the Library book sale uh, several years ago, probably like 10 years ago. Next up, um, The Storm Lord by technically, which I read um, a few years ago, and I didn't actually quite like it, but I'm going to give it another go because it's been so long, and yeah, I haven't gotten around to reading um, an Akire, the sequel to the Storm Lord. Obviously, I have a bookmark in here. <laughs> well, I'll probably go ahead and move it and send that to the cookbooks. And the uh, concluding volume in the trilogy, The White Serpent. And then we have two books by David Eddings, uh, Domes of Fire, uh, book one of the Tamuli. Um, this is a sequel series to The Illinium. And in this um, series, Sparhawk is tasked by um, the sort of Pope-like figure to accompany his wife on a mission to visit the Tamuli Empire. Um, there's some sort of threat going on, I think, or some sort of conspiracy. And so, yeah. So in this book, basically it's Sparhawk and his uh, companions traveling from um, Elenium to uh, Tamuli and the capital. And it's, I remember it quite fondly. Um, I really enjoyed this series when I was uh, younger. I read them when I was, I think, in my high school. And quite loved the entire series. Um, although my opinions of Eddings has subsequently changed because of um, revelations that have come out. Um, he and his wife were actually sent to prison for um, abusing their adopted children. And this is the uh, second book in the Illinium trilogy. So in this trilogy, uh, Sparhawk, who's sort of a companion of this sort of magical knight order has to rescue the newly crowned queen from a conspiracy to steal her throne and in this book um, he's basically trying to find this um, magical item that is said to be able to heal her And I think it's also in that book that they reveal that their childlike companion is actually a goddess. Uh, here's a novel by Violet Milan, The Mirror Prince. Picked it up a few years ago from the Golden's Book Exchange. And now we have some books by Scott Lynch, The Lies of Locke Lamora. It's about a a con man thief um, who's basically a priest of the god of thieves um, working on a major score. Uh, 
all the while combating an evil sorcerer. Um, this is the sequel, Red Seas Under Red Skies. I think in which case they're going to a casino. Um, Loch Lamar and the last of his companions. Um, the Night, um, The Air of Night, uh, book one of the Wall of Night series by Helen Lowe. The first book in the Malazan, um, Book of the Fallen series, Gardens at the Moon by Stephen Erickson. I tried this book, oh, it was about going on four years ago, or maybe a little less than that, um, and I didn't quite get on with it all that well, but I'm probably going to come back to it, um, because sometimes I will not get on with the book and then come back to it and like it, and sometimes I don't. Uh, this is another uh, Conan book, Conan the Valiant by Roland Green. I don't think I actually ever have had this one before. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't think I've ever actually read this one. So this one's new to me. I picked it up from Golden's Book Exchange along with the other Conan pastiche. So to recap... Uh, basically, in the late 80s and 90s, a tour, the storied um, publisher of science fiction, a uh, publisher specializing in science fiction and fantasy, uh, published a series of Conan pastiche novels uh, by myriad um, authors, including Robert Jordan and others. Um, and I got into them in my late high school, like when I was in high school. I, I gobbled them up. Um, and some are, were good. I remember most of them being really good, but that's probably teenager uh, tinted glasses. Um, a lot of this stuff that I've read as a teenager that I've since returned to, I have considerably negative. My opinions are a lot more negative now than they were when I was younger. Anyway. So I quite enjoyed them. Um, I haven't gone back to them since, but I do want to. And also it did take me longer to actually discover the original Conan, uh, Robert E. Howard, um, and his original stories, which I subsequently picked up and really enjoy. So next is uh, The Sorcerer's Son by Phyllis Eisenstein. And The Never Ending Story by Michael Enda. Endy. Um, so this obviously was made an appearance last weekly reads. Um, this is a book I had wanted to read for ages. Um, so when I was a kid, um, I loved The Never Ending Story. Although, I actually, my first experience with it was the second movie, uh, starring Jonathan Brandeis and as Bastion, and I'm blanking on everybody else. Um, and then it took me a while to watch the first uh, movie starring Noah Hathaway and Oliver Barrett. And much like with um, The Phantom Toll Booth. Uh, which is a childhood movie I loved, even though I never actually watched the whole movie. Because when I was in school, uh, particularly elementary school, during like the holidays, or if they were inclement, rather, during um, PE period, we would usually watch like The Phantom Toll Booth or Pippi Longstocking or another movie. And we'd never actually finish it. Um, we'd always get to a certain point and then the day would be over and it kind of annoyed me. Um, I eventually finished, um, the Fendom Toll Booth, uh, about 10 years ago, the, um, at TCM, Turner Classic Movies, airs the Fendom Toll Booth, um, once every November, I think. 
and so I usually try to catch it then. Um, but I'd always wanted to watch, I mean, not watch, read the book. Also, um, I've always wanted to read the book version of um, the book of The Never Ending Story. And so about 10 years ago, I actually read The Phantom Toll Booth by Norman Jester and loved it. And it took me a little bit while to get to uh, The Never Ending Story. I actually bailed on it the first time I attempted it um, when I checked it out from the library. And then I finally found this copy at Golden's Book Exchange, and it finally took me to this year to actually read it. And yeah, the uh, the film adaptations are better. <laughs> I just uh, I think it, it's too there's too much of a crutch for the characters that there's not really a whole lot of danger going on there. So, yeah. Another book by Kenneth Lee, uh, Faces Underwater. Um, this is the first, book, the first book in the Secret Books of Venice, which is a fantasy counterpart to Venice. And this takes place during a carnival where everybody has to wear masks. And it's about a young man who falls in love with, I'm thinking some kind of artificial woman or a bewitched woman and he has to try to rescue her from a cult of demon worshippers if i remember it has been practically forever since i read this book i've had it for oh well over a decade i think i've had it when i first went to goldens because i remember picking it up from goldens i think Another book by Timothy Lee, A Heroine of the World. Oh, another book by David. Okay, this is book three of the Elenium series, The Sapphire Rose. I wonder why they're not together. Anyway, well, obviously, science fiction and fantasy are kind of, you know, messed up order right now i'm gonna correct that later so this is the third and concluding volume of the Elenium trilogy in which sparhawk rescues the queen uh leads the defense of um the sort of spiritual capital of these um, countries that are very european and drives the enemy empire back into the sort of standard evil empire's homeland and then he leads a special strike force to the capital where they eventually defeat the god emperor and the evil god behind him. Uh, the Coming of the Horse Clans by Robert Adams. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, which... I bailed on in the first chapter when I tried to read it like a decade or more ago. Uh, Throne of the Crescent Moon, book one of the Crescent Moon Kingdoms by, excuse me, Salamed, Saladin Ahmed. Even though I don't think there actually ever has been a sequel to Throne of the Crescent Moons. I did, I love this book. It was really good. It took me a while to get into it, but I did enjoy it eventually. Although, again, I don't know if there's ever actually been a sequel published. I've never uh, heard anything about that. Ugh. Okay. The Glamour Thieves, uh, book one of the Blue Unicorn series by Don Allman. This is uh, urban fantasy gay erotica. Um, it's about um, an orc who, a who's a mechanic who has this on-again, off-again relationship with um, this elf named Austin. And they kind of get involved in some underworld shenanigans. It's terrible. Just badly written. Jeez. 
Mm. Uh, the Years of Rice and Salt by Kim Stanley Robinson. And finally, 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City by K.J. Parker, which I want to get to pretty soon. Hopefully I can. So that wraps up uh, part 13 of Science Fiction and Fantasy. I will be right back with um, part 14, and hopefully I will have enough time today to do a tag. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you, BookTube. Have a great afternoon, and please stay safe.